Hey everyone, if you saw my last video where I make stickers with Cricut, you'll see that a lot of people requested creating them with a free software. So that's what I'm doing with a software called Photopea. It's photopeapea.com. It's free and very much like Photoshop. You don't need an account. So to start, I'm just going to grab a file from my computer. I have already a PNG transparent file, so I'm going to use that to start with, but I'll show you some other ways along with this one. So first I need to select the image. So to do that, I'm going to grab the magnetic lasso select tool and I'm just going to click and drag across this image. This one has pretty clear line between the background and the image, so it's going to do a good job of cutting this out. And I'm going to show you next how to cut out the background if it has like a color background or a white background. Say if you drew something in Procreate, Procreate, <laughs> or something else and you had a white background, you forgot to export it with transparent. Anyways, so now that I have that selected, I'm going to go to create a new layer first because I don't want to mess with my original layer. And then I go to edit stroke. So I'm just going to make this about 35. I just kind of guessed at this number and I want it to be white because I want that white area around the sticker when I cut it out of the Cricut. So this is what it looks like. And now I'm just going to export it as a PNG file because um, you'll want to have the transparent background for Cricut. Um, I'm also going to save it as an SVG just out of curiosity. So um, usually SVGs are vector. So it's interesting that this program has that, but I figure why not try it? So I saved it as SVG as well, just to see how Cricut handles um, this type of SV SVG file. Okay, so I'm going to try it using a image that I grabbed from the internet that has a background. So I'm going to want to cut out the background of this image to do that. This time I'm going to try select color range because then hopefully that will select everything that's yellow. I'm just sliding around the fuzziness slider to see if that makes it a little bit crisper. So once I hit OK, that should then just have the flamingo selected and then I can cut out the background. So I just hit delete on my keyboard to remove the background, which should make it transparent now. And now I need to select my flamingo. This time I'm going to use the magic wand. I changed the tolerance to a little bit higher so I could get a better selection and um, it missed like the sunglasses and the tip of his beak and the hat so I just went to turn on the addition icon that you saw on the top left and then I just clicked those areas to add them to the entire selection. Once I'm happy with my selection, I am going to create another new layer just the same as last time so I can add a stroke um, to a layer that is not this one. And I'm going to do the same thing with the stroke, um, but I realized when I did it this time that this image was a lot smaller quality, so the stroke was way bigger, so I had to resize that. So I noticed when I zoomed in that there's some rough areas around the inside of the stroke and then when I put the flamingo back on I can see that there's actually some transparency in between the stroke and the image. So to fix that I filled it with white and then had to fill it again but this does add a little bit more to the stroke so I'll show you another way in my next example. So in this next example, I'm actually just going to create a blank project and create the image and the sticker from scratch using Photopea, Photo P, um, so that you have something different that you don't have to actually upload an image. You can just create something using their shapes. So I'm just going to grab the custom shape tool and I'm going to use the speech bubble and then I'm just going to turn it a purple color because I do not like the color red. And to top it all off, I'm going to add some text. The first thing that came to my mind was bonjour, even though I don't really speak French. So um, 
yeah, I just grabbed, they have a lot of like interesting fonts in this program. So I was just going through them and thought, hey, this metal looking font would be cool. So that's why I chose the one I did. So now I need to add the stroke to this shape. So I initially did the color range thing again, where I just selected the color and then it selected the shape for me. And then I just went into edit again and added the white stroke. But I was getting the same problem where I had a space in between the stroke and the image itself that was transparent. But I had an aha moment and I got rid of the stroke, created a new stroke, but changed it to center instead of outside, made it slightly bigger, and then dragged that layer below the shape so that way it is a seamless white background, no transparency in the middle. So I'm just going to turn on my bonjour text and then save this as a PNG again. And I'm going to use this as my example for printing some stickers on Cricut next. Okay, so this might be um, the same tutorial as my last video, but I'm just going to go through it anyways. So once I'm in Cricut, I upload the image. I chose the simple image type and once I hit continue, you can turn on or you can hit preview before you hit continue just to make sure that it covers your whole area and mine does pretty simple shape. Um, and then I just hit continue. I named my project and spelled it wrong and then hit save again. So I just chose my image, inserted it, and I did try uploading the SVG image, but Cricut just wouldn't do anything when I tried. So I don't think it works from the Photopea app. But anyways, um, I'm in the print section and there were some comments in my last video that people didn't have the advanced settings that I was showing, but I know that Cricut updated where those exist with their new software update. I turn off bleed because my, my outside is white, so I don't need the bleed. But you'll see the uh, advanced settings. If you turn on system dialog, that's where you're going to find them. They may not appear right on top of your screen. Check if it's behind your browser because that happens to me too. And then from here, you can change your settings. Ignore what I was doing the drop down. You want to click on show, show details. And then from here, you can change the media quality drop down. Um, and that's really the only one you need to. Change it to best and you can choose your media type to be photo. So once you hit print, you should be good to go unless these are your ink levels. Okay, so as you saw, my ink was low and this is what came out of it. It's all pink and it doesn't, it's not gonna work. It has to be have a black guideline. So, had to go to the store and grab some ink and then when I put the sheet of sticker paper in and put it in upside down and it printed on the weird plastic side, so that's no good either. <laughs> So I'm going to try it for a third time and better get it right this time. Finally, I got it right. It printed well and all the colors are nice and vibrant and everything looks good. So now I'm going to take it to the Cricut, put it on my mat and hope for the best but expect the worst. So my first try was a fail. Uh, Cricut couldn't read the guidelines. It's very annoying. Usually this is some sort of lighting issue. So I'm trying again and I'm going to open my other set of blinds to let more light in and hopefully that does the trick. Okay, so finally it worked. Uh, the calibration is a little off. You can see there's a little bit more on this side than on that side. So that's another annoying troubleshooting thing you have to do with Cricut. But I was able to use free software to cut out a sticker, no problems, and adjust my print settings. And I hate these stickers, they're the silhouette ones. So that's why I used them for this test. But it worked. So let me know if you have any questions uh, or issues. I'll try and help you if I can. Um, but I hope this was helpful and you're able to make stickers yourself.